are strategic priorities of talent and experience, focus on developing identity and community. They're inward facing. They answer the question, who are we? The next two priorities, impact and innovation, ask how do we interact with others? How do we integrate our Jewish culture, values, and tradition into our work? Impact as a priority delivers on our commitment that Milken is a resource and a community for life. One of the goals in this realm of our strategic plan was expanding Milken's reach off campus. Service learning is a key area in which we reach into the community and across the school. We work monthly and quarterly with Hope of the Valley, Los Angeles Museum of the Holocaust, City of Hope, Our Big Kitchen, Firehouse 109, and Shemesh Farms, to name a few. In the upper divisions, students have an opportunity to lead this work. For instance, Lily serves as a co-chair of Yozma's Children's Group, which led a huge toy and book drive in December, and she also co-chairs Uplift Buddies, which is a partnership between Milken students and seniors at Sunrise of Woodland Hills. Our Jewish Federation of Greater Los Angeles also helps Milken to amplify its impact. And I want to acknowledge Rabbi Noah Farkas, president and CEO of the Federation, and the Milken parents, who is in the audience for his support of Milken and of the Jewish community as a whole. Impact also happens in the ways that our students apply and extend their learning in other contexts. Let's hear from scholar athlete Shia Schwartz about his lab work as part of the Mitchell Academy of Science and Technology's Advanced Science Research Program. Hi, my name is Shia Schwartz, and this is my Honors Science Research and Design Project. For my project, I'm working with a fourth year PhD student at the USC Biomechanics Lab. We're researching Achilles tendinopathy, which is the degeneration of the collagen protein and inflammation of the tendon. Achilles tendinopathy is one of the most common lower limb injuries and it affects sprinters, runners, and jumpers. As an athlete, I understand the importance of your Achilles tendon because it's a major stabilizing factor within your leg. It is crucial for everyday movements and athletic movements. Sprinting, running, jumping, even walking uses your Achilles tendon. We use bilateral analysis to compare the limb affected by tendinopathy to the limb that's not affected. In front of you, you can see two Achilles tendons, the left Achilles tendon and the right Achilles tendon. So we're comparing the two tendons of a single participant. If we look at the right Achilles tendon, it's much bigger. It has swelling, which indicates the tendinopathy, allowing us to understand that the right Achilles tendon is the involved tendon. In order to track movement and measure power output, we use Qualysis Motion Capture and EMG to understand what is happening in our patient's limb. This is a sample of some of the data we collected. We graphed our participants' motion on a three-dimensional plane. If you walk into our lab, you can see 13 to 14 cameras all around the room capturing our participants' motion using those reflective markers I talked about earlier. This is the data we received from the experiment I just described. If you look at the green dots, those are referring to the ankle. On the x-axis, you can see that we have the non-involved versus the involved side. In the y-axis, you can see the energy expenditure is graphed. If you look closely, you can see that an involved ankle actually contributes more energy than the non-involved, which does not support our hypothesis. As researchers, this means that there's either other factors that are affecting this participant's energy expenditure, or our hypothesis is incorrect and we need to go back to the drawing board. In order to determine which is true, we need to increase our sample size and have more participants in for testing. Honestly, it was scary at first being in a room full of PhD candidates. I began by just taking notes and recording trials, but as my role has expanded, I became a vital part of this team and I actually instruct participants and help with the actual research. First, I want to thank Dr. Cooley, who took a chance on accepting a high school student into a PhD lab and pairing me up with her student, David Ortiz. And David, just thank you so much for being an amazing mentor. I truly appreciate everything you've done for me and I will take all the lessons I've learned from you with me for the rest of my life. Another way of expanding Milken's reach has been through our industry-leading internship programming, available both to our seniors and to our alums. This year alone, we offered 60 internship opportunities framed and explored through a Jewish lens, spanning many different industries. We also offered 13 career enhancement events in areas like networking, public speaking, and interviewing. Part of the priority of impact has to do with prioritizing affordability and fiscal sustainability. 
Currently, 23% of our budget supports financial aid, and this is higher than any of our peer schools. We're committed to solving the issue of affordability so that any family that wants a Jewish education at Milken can afford it. And we're committed to ensuring that the school has the finances and program resources to thrive into perpetuity. Currently, our endowment is close to 15 million, a 100% increase from where it was just four years ago. <clears throat> we're fortunate to have parents, grandparents, alumni, alumni parents, and community members who have generously invested in the Jewish future by giving to our endowment. I want to thank New Milken parents, Fanny and David Marcus, alumni parents, Susie and Jaime Gesundheit, and honorary grandparents, Wendy and Ken Ruby, for their recent and incredibly meaningful endowment gifts. <clears throat> Last year, at our 30th anniversary gala that drew more than 800 community members, we announced that Janine Winkler Lowy gave a million dollars for the Massa scholarships for families working in Jewish organizations. And we also raised nearly a half a million dollars for a new Rabbi Zeldin tuition assistance fund for children of our alumni. These funds are a poignant reflection on our mission and values. Thank you so much, Janine, once again, for your incredible generosity and leadership. In monitoring our budget, we need to keep our eye on revenue and expenses. And what you can see from this slide is that expenses are largely allocated to faculty and staff compensation, which makes up 70% of our budget. Every year, the Finance Committee and the Board of Trustees sets the following year's budget with a priority to increase tuition in as small a way as possible. With the increase of inflation, setting next year's budget took exceptional partnership and hard work. In our decisions, we balance the need for our community to continue accessing a Milken education and the need for a Milken education to remain synonymous with excellence. For the 2023-2024 school year, there will be a 4.25% tuition increase, putting tuition at $49,950. <laughs> By the way, Bobby, that's like the gold star for the evening. I mean, you know, you definitely, I mean, that, that is just the, the best moment of the whole night. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was going to say for the bargain price, I was going to joke about it, but then I figured who's going to want me to joke about tuition, but then you did it for me. Okay, um, the tuition increase is lower than Milken's historical norm, an independent school five-year average of 5%. In a highly volatile time, Milken has increased tuition of an average of 3.3% 3 per year over the last five-year period. When we thought about tuition, some of the key factors that resulted in our tuition are that we are implementing an average of 5.5% increase in faculty salaries, which is vital to keep pace with inflation and stay competitive in the marketplace. Making up nearly three-fourths of our budget, tuition primarily funds our people, which directly impacts the student experience. Inflation has impacted major levers in our budget. For example, transportation costs are up 20%, and insurance costs are up 13%. We are very lucky that in setting tuition, we also have incredible donors, which relieved pressure on tuition increases. So many of you were so generous, and I'm proud for the first time in Milken's history, our annual fund crossed $2 million. <laughs> if you want to know more about the school's revenue and expenses, join us for the school's budget teach on February 8th. When we're talking about facts and figures, it's easy to dissociate from the core of the work in the realm of impact the generation of Jewish leaders and thinkers steeped in our texts and values. Let's hear from some of them how the Beit Midrash signature program shapes their intellectual ability and ethical responsibility across all realms of school and life. I think what I learned most um, in Beit Midrash was how to ask a, a critical and thoughtful question. And that is something I think about 
every day to this day is how to try and poke a hole in it, try and ask something thoughtful that maybe somebody hasn't asked before. First you're like presented with a text and it kind of sounds like gibberish. And then you have to like reread it a few times or like, you know, you rewatch a movie and you discover new things every time. It's like when you study it with someone else and then you study it with your teacher, you're all coming from different perspectives. So we're all identifying different aspects of the text. So then we have to wonder like, why did we encounter this the first time? Or why is this so poignant in the text, but it's not as relevant later on? One of the core things is, yeah, like working in Shavruta, that was not something that would happen all the time in other classes. And I feel like in college, that's definitely a huge thing, like working in pods, working in pairs. My professor will just set us up with two people that I've never even met before, you know, and we have to work together to kind of pull something apart, like something that's really challenging. I, I thought it was fascinating that you could have this whole dialogue, this whole interface. Um, you're, you're sort of watching it play out. It's almost like a screenplay uh, between different rabbis, commentators, bringing back in Torah um, about this very, very simple and specific thing. It's just another way of study. I feel like it's not something I've experienced in other classes and I've definitely never experienced prior to Milken. But the Beit Midrash Fellowship gives us the chance to be our own teachers and to learn from our peers. And then those skills, those advocacy skills, those public speaking, just critical analysis, you can apply to so many other subjects. There's, there's one teacher at the front of the room, but 20 teachers sitting at their desks. And I really feel like that's more the case for Beit Midrash than for any other class. Like, once we get on a tangent or we like unlock something in a text, it's like we're so focused to the point where we're like, stop, like we need more time. Like, enough, like we need to keep going, we're on to something. I think one of the amazing things about Beit Midrash and my entire Jewish education at Milken was learning the word peoplehood and understanding that being Jewish was more than just a culture, it was more than just a religion, it was more than a people, it was more than a land. It, 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 um, defied racial barriers and ethnic barriers um, and was this larger sort of conceptual thing. And I think Beit Midrash really played into that, right? These lessons that we've learned um, that have been passed down for generations um, that I've seen in my own life serve that higher peoplehood. I think that learning to closely analyze a text in Beit Midrash is a skill that's going to serve me well, uh, both in my other classes in high school, but also down the line in college. Even my policy classes that I took in college, I think Beit Midrash prepared me because, for two reasons. I think, you know, first and foremost, it's that critical thinking component and taking something, especially in, in the policy field, that everybody sort of sees and takes for granted. In Beit Midrash, we look to poke holes in what is, has been taken for granted and what we've read over and over again. Every time in Beit Midrash that, I, that we start a new unit, I feel like I'm coming to new realizations about myself and about how, how I as a Jew function in my Jewish community. The essence of it has been carried down through generations in my family. It had to have been, right? Um, and I was the benefactor of that and I'm reading it you know, in this high school class and eventually hopefully one day I'll be able to pass those values down uh, to my children. Looking ahead in the area of impact, we're focusing on our alumni and our alumni parents. We launched an alumni parent council this year with quarterly events, such as cocktails at one of our trustees' home with speaker Ben Freeman. We're adding an alumni board in New York City and training our alums across the country to lead Shabbat dinners and discussions. I'm excited about the alumni mega reunion in May on our campus, which will follow up on the gala, which brought together more than 200 alums. We already have 12 children of alums at Milken, and we hope that this number grows exponentially in the years to come.